welcome back to TFT Central. Today we're going to run through a summary of all of the latest and best monitor and display related news from this year's CES event, so that you've got a summary of all of that news all in one place. There's news about new screens and panels, new technologies, OLED updates, some interesting new LCD monitors. Links to all of the relevant news and information are included in the description below, but let's get right into it now. Let's start by looking at the OLED monitors first. This is a huge focus of this year's CES event, and it seems to be all about those 32-inch 4K OLED gaming monitors. There's a wide range of these that have just been announced, so we'll go through each of them in detail. There are two paths that display manufacturers are following. Some are coming to market sooner using Samsung Display's third-generation QD OLED technology panel, which is already in mass production now but others are waiting until later in the year to use LG Display's competing WOLED panel instead. The specs and features vary between the two panels, but let's look at the QD OLED base monitors first. These all have a 31.5 inch size panel, commonly referred to as 32 inches, and offer a 3840 by 2160 4K resolution and a 240 Hz refresh rate. We've got more information on Gen 3 QD OLED panels and what's new and improved for 2024, in our other videos, so check that out if you want to know more. The Dell Alienware AW3225DF is expected to be the first launch to market and has a few interesting features on top of the 32-inch 4K 240Hz QD OLED panel. It will be a curved format screen with a subtle 1700R curvature, whereas all of the other announced 32-inch OLED monitors so far are flat. This will also support Dolby Vision HDR and eARC sound, which will be a first for desktop monitors. Dell say that this will be available from the 11th of January in North America, with other regional availability still to be confirmed. The HP Omen Transcend 32 will signal HP's entry into the OLED monitor market, and this has got a few added features of note. There's again support for Dolby Vision HDR content, like on the Dell screen. This model has USB Type-C connectivity with a high 140 watts power delivery as well, and audio that is apparently being tuned by HyperX and includes a fully customizable 10 band EQ. There are rumors that this model will also feature DisplayPort 2.1 connectivity, although this is oddly omitted from the official press release, and even if it was listed, there's not been any clarity around whether this would feature any of the new UHBR speeds or not. We'll mark that as a possibility for now, but keep an eye on our main site for updates on that topic when we get more details. If you do want to know more about DisplayPort 2.1 and what's holding this up in the monitor market, check out our new article link below. There's no confirmation on pricing and availability for this model yet, although our guess would be during Q1 given the panel is now in mass production. Gigabyte also announced their own 32-inch QD OLED monitor with the Aorus FO32U2P. It's got the same 4K resolution and 240Hz refresh rate, but this is the only model announced so far where DisplayPort 2.1 with the full UHBR20 bandwidth is specifically listed and promoted. That would make it the first gaming monitor announced so far with the full DisplayPort 2.1 bandwidth capability, not even the massive 57-inch Samsung Odyssey G95NC with its dual 4K resolution and 240Hz refresh rate features UHBR20, as that model uses UHBR13.5. Of course, there aren't any consumer-grade graphics cards that even support UHBR20 yet, so that will presumably make testing and development of this Gigabyte screen very difficult, and perhaps might delay launch a bit. For loads more information on DisplayPort 2.1, check out our new article link below. This Gigabyte screen also has a range of tactical gaming features, including a dedicated button to switch between different simulated screen sizes and resolutions for different gaming genres. Gigabyte didn't provide a release date, but we'd expect it to be launched during the first half of 2024. MSI also announced their own model using this QD OLED panel with the MPG321URX. Along with the same 4K resolution and 240Hz refresh rate, this model has USB Type-C connectivity along with full feature and full bandwidth HDMI 2.1 ports for consoles. The screen also includes MSI's latest OLED Care 2.0 protection measures, which seem quite comprehensive. This includes new mitigation measures like taskbar detection, boundary detection, and multi-logo detection as well. This should hopefully help further with any concerns around image retention and burn-in. There's no official confirmation on release date or price from MSI yet, but based on information provided to Monitors Unboxed, 
This apparently is going to be launched in February in North America, with wider availability following in March. Samsung Electronics announced their own version with their Odyssey OLED G80SD. This will be a flat format version as well, but one interesting note is that Samsung Electronics have added their own anti-glare coating on top of the standard QD OLED panel's semi-glossy coating. We wait to see what impact this has on picture quality, reflection handling and everything else when we get to see one later in the year. The G80SD will also feature their SmartThings Smart TV software, along with support for multi-control, which is a feature for seamlessly transferring images and text between the monitor and other Samsung devices like mobiles and tablets. There wasn't any word on pricing and availability yet, but we'd expect this to be launched during Q1 like the other monitors of this size. Although not showcased or really talked about CES this year, but worthy of a quick mention, is the ASUS ROG Swift PG32UCM. This is a 32-inch 4K 240Hz QD OLED monitor again that was originally showcased at Gamescom last year in August. We covered that in detail at the time, but ASUS have released a bit more information on their screen this year for CES, including confirmation that it will support Dolby Vision HDR. So all of those 32-inch 4K 240Hz QD OLED monitors using the Samsung display panel should be released during the first half of the year, mostly in Q1, we think. The alternative approach that some manufacturers are taking is to instead wait and make use of LG Display's forthcoming and competing WOLED panel. That's being produced later in the year. This is also 32 inches in size with a 4K resolution and 240Hz refresh rate, but it also offers the ability to switch to a lower resolution of 1080p and then boost your refresh rate to a whopping 480Hz. This is achieved through a feature that LG Display called Dynamic Frequency and Resolution, or DFR, but which display manufacturers are calling dual mode operation. ASUS have announced their ROG Swift PG32 UCDP monitor that will feature this panel as well as that dual mode support, and this was heavily promoted at CES this year. It's got dual mode support to allow 4K 240Hz if you want to focus on resolution, detail and image quality, or you can switch down to a lower 1080p resolution and prioritize frame rates instead for competitive gaming up to 480Hz. The ASUS screen will also include the increased 1300 nits peak brightness and their added ELMB blur reduction mode. We'll talk about ELMB a little bit more a bit later as well. There's no official word on pricing or launch date from ASUS at the moment, but our estimation is around August, September time based on panel production plans that we've seen previously. This launch will be later than the QD OLED based PG32 UCDM we talked about earlier. LG Electronics also teased their own version before Christmas with the UltraGear 32GS95UE. This is again used as that LG Display W OLED panel with dual mode support, and LG's model has other features like pixel sound technology, where the speakers are situated behind the panel and it supports two woofers and DTS Virtual X sound. There's no official word on pricing or launch date from LG either at the moment, but we'd expect to see this around August, September time like the ASUS model. In other OLED monitor sizes, there were some other screens announced, but let's look at the 27 inch models first. Perhaps most interesting was the ASUS ROG Swift PG27 AQDP which was announced as the world's first 480Hz OLED gaming monitor. It's 27 inch in size with a 2560x1440 resolution, and it's built around LG Display's forthcoming WOLED panel that we brought you news about at the end of December in our OLED roadmap video, and which LG themselves also announced and showcased at CES. We know that this new monitor will offer an increased peak brightness of 1300 nits, it will have USB Type-C connectivity, and even include extreme low motion blur ASUS is named for black frame insertion, which we'll talk about a little bit later. There's no official word on pricing or launch date from ASUS, but our estimation is again around August, September time, aligned with the panel production roadmaps that we've seen. Also in the 27 inch size are a couple of high refresh rate gaming screens from other manufacturers, including the Dell Alienware AW2725DF, which has a 1440p resolution and a 360 Hertz refresh rate, this model is using Samsung Display's QD OLED panel instead, and that has a lower refresh rate than LG Display's 480Hz W OLED panel, but it should be available much sooner. In fact, Dell say this will be available in North America from the 11th of January. MSI also announced their MPG271QRX, 
a 27 inch gaming screen which uses the Samsung 360Hz QD OLED panel again. This has USB Type-C connectivity as well as full feature HDMI 2.1 ports along with their comprehensive OLED Care 2.0 protection measures like their larger 32 inch model that we talked about earlier. Again, no official confirmation of release date or price, but we would expect this to be available during Q1, probably around the same time as their 32-inch 4K 240Hz model. Samsung Electronics announced their own version using the QD OLED panel and offering, again, 1440p at 360Hz. This is their Odyssey OLED E60 SD. This will again have their added anti-glare coating that they've applied on top of the standard QD OLED panel's semi-glossy coating that we talked about earlier for their 32 inch model. This 27 inch version doesn't seem to have the smart TV functionality or multi-control support of the larger screen though. At least it's not mentioned in their press release. There wasn't any word from Samsung on pricing or availability, but we'd expect this to be launched during Q1 like the other QD OLED base models of this size and spec. Gigabyte also announced their Aorus FO27 Q3, which will have the same 27 inch QD OLED panel again, this has some of the tactical gaming features and switches we saw and talked about earlier on their 32 inch 4K model as well, although other specs and features are scarce at the moment. LG Electronics also announced an update for their popular 27GR95QE 27 inch OLED monitor that we reviewed last year in the form of their new 27GS95QE. It's not really clear what updates or changes this will offer based on the press release, and we know that this will offer the same 2560 by 1440 resolution and the 240 hertz refresh rate as the predecessor. And it's being built around the existing WOLED panel from LG Display still. As such, we do at least expect this to be launched soon in Q1, given that the panel is already being used, but more info on our main site when we get any more specs and details. There were also some ultra wide format OLED monitors announced as well. Acer unveiled a couple of ultra wide OLED screens at their event, First, there was the 34-inch Predator X34X with a 3440 by 1440 resolution and 240Hz refresh rate. This is based on an LG Display WOLED panel and has a steep 800R curvature. It's got USB Type-C connectivity with 90 watts power delivery, KVM support as well. It's expected to be launched in Q2 apparently. There's also the Predator X39 from Acer, which is a larger 39 inch size ultra wide screen. It's got the same 3440 by 1440 resolution, 240 hertz refresh rate, and 800R curvature of its smaller brother, but with a slightly larger screen size for increased immersion or more distant viewing positions. This one's built around an LG Display W OLED panel as well, and also has USB Type-C and KVM features. This one should also be available in Q2 as well, according to Acer. LG Electronics announced their equivalent 34-inch and 39-inch ultrawide models too, with the 34GS95QE and the 39GS95QE, respectively. These both offer a 3440x1440 resolution and 240Hz refresh rate, and will have that same steep 800R curvature like the Acer models. These two ultrawide OLED monitors from LG do not feature the pixel sound technology that we talked about earlier on their flagship 32-inch 4K model. No confirmation of release date or pricing, but we'd expect to see these soon during Q1, given that the panels are already in mass production now. ASUS also showcased their 34-inch ultra-wide OLED monitor that was originally announced at Gamescom last August, with a 3440 by 1440 resolution and a 240Hz refresh rate. We've got that screen, the PG34WCDM, with us now in fact for a review, so stay tuned for that in the near future but it looks like this will be the first 34-inch 240Hz OLED monitor released to market, and that'll probably be early in Q1. Also announced by ASUS at CES was their larger 39-inch PG39WCDM. It has largely the same specs as the 34-inch model, including the same 3440 by 1440 resolution and 240Hz refresh rate. It's got a 1300 nits peak brightness and support for their ELMB blur reduction mode. That's expected to be available during Q1 as well. Finally, in the 34-inch size bracket, Gigabyte announced their Aorus MO34MQC2, which has the same WOLED panel with 3440 by 1440 resolution and 240 hz refresh rate. This should also have the company's tactical gaming features, and we'd expect this to be available during Q1. 
In the larger screen sizes still, LG also announced a couple of 45-inch ultra-wide models. It's not immediately obvious from their press release or provided specs how these two differ, other than that the QB model has an added USB Type-C connection. But we do know that they are intended to be updates to their existing 45-inch ultra-wide OLED 45GR95 QE from last year. Despite our hopes that these might feature the forthcoming high-resolution 5120x2160 WOLED panels that we know are in LG Display's roadmap, they look like they will be simple updates to the existing model and existing panel and use the current 3440x1440 resolution OLED panel and 240Hz refresh rate. Both models have the same spec and features listed in the press release, including a steep 800R curvature and certification under VESA's Display HDR400 True Black scheme. The QP model has an added USB Type-C connection with 65 watts power delivery. The features may vary further between the two models, but we will have to wait for further specs and information to determine what else is different. There's no confirmation of release date or pricing, but we would expect to see these soon during Q1, given they're actually based on the existing and already available WLED panel. Samsung showcased their updated Odyssey OLED G9 model, the G95SD, which is an update to the SC model that we reviewed last year. It's a 49-inch super ultra-wide screen with a 5120x1440 resolution and 240Hz refresh rate. It looks like they have updated the smart TV software and capabilities, as well as adding multi-control support that we talked about earlier for their 32-inch G8 model. This updated SD model also has the added matte anti-glare coating, so that will be different visually to the existing SC model, which has the standard semi-glossy coating. Like the 27-inch and 32-inch models, there wasn't any word on pricing or availability, but we'd expect this to be launched during Q1 given that the panel is already in existence and already being used, in fact, by Samsung, and it's just some updates to the screen's features. In the LCD space, there were a few announcements of monitors of note. We'll work downwards, starting with the larger screen size first. Acer announced their Predator Z57, a huge 57-inch sized super ultra-wide screen that will compete with Samsung's already released G95NC model. The screen has a dual 4K resolution of 7680x2160, along with a 120Hz refresh rate. This is lower than the 240Hz available on Samsung's model, but it's built around a VA technology panel with a mini LED backlight that has 2,304 local zooming zones, and this should offer high-end HDR performance. The screen can reach up to 1,000 nits peak brightness, according to the spec, allowing it to meet the VESA Display HDR 1000 certification tier as well. This model should be released in Q2, Acer say. Next up, Dell announced an interesting new model in their popular UltraSharp lineup. The U4025QW is a 40-inch ultra-wide screen with a 5120x2160 5K resolution. It's aimed primarily at productivity and general office uses, but it has an IPS black panel which offers an improved contrast ratio of 2001 compared with normal IPS panels which reach only 1000 to 1. It's also got a wide range of connectivity options and extras, as well as some mid-tier HDR600 support. Interestingly, this will also be the first semi-high refresh rate IPS black panel that we've seen with 120Hz supported. There's more info on the features and specs in our news piece that's linked below, but this one is expected to be released at the end of February. Dell also announced a smaller 34-inch ultra-wide LCD screen with the UltraSharp UW3425WE. It's got the same IPS black type panel with 2000 to 1 contrast ratio and 120Hz refresh rate again. That one is also expected to be released at the end of February. Acer also announced their own 34-inch ultra-wide monitor, the Predator X34 V3, which has a 3440x1440 resolution, a VA panel, 180Hz refresh rate, and an impressive 2304 zone mini LED backlight for high-end HDR performance. This one meets the VESA Display HDR1000 tier, and it's expected to be released in Q2. Away from specific monitor announcements, there were a couple of interesting technology updates from CES as well. NVIDIA announced their new G-Sync Pulsar technology, which allows you to use their Ultra Low Motion Blur, or ULMB, strobing blur reduction backlight at the same time as G-Sync variable refresh rates. Previously, you can only use one or the other, so for future displays that support the native G-Sync hardware module, this will be a popular and interesting option. 
Lots more info on that in the news piece linked below about how it works and some of the challenges that Nvidia faced making this work. So far there seems to be only a single screen announced for later this year that will feature this, an Asus ROG Swift PG27 series monitor that looks like it will be a 27 inch 1440p 360Hz IPS monitor. On the topic of motion blur reduction technologies, Asus are also bringing back the black frame insertion or BFI to the OLED monitor market. This is the OLED equivalent of a strobing blur reduction backlight on LCDs, which can look really great on OLED monitors, thanks to the super fast response times of the panels. You can get clear and sharp motion across the entire screen without strobe crosstalk, ghosting, or any overshoot halos that you might worry about on LCD screens. It looks like ASUS have added this themselves to their new OLED monitors after the panel manufacturer LG Display did away with it a couple of years ago. This is listed as being included on their forthcoming 240Hz, 34-inch and 39-inch models that we talked about earlier, and that those should be available in Q1, and also their high-end 27-inch 480Hz and 32-inch 4K dual-mode monitors that are expected to be available later in the year around Q3. We're currently reviewing their 34-inch PG34 WCDM monitor and have confirmation that this seems to work at 120Hz fixed refresh rate only, but look out for more testing and information in our review soon. So hopefully that's given you a good roundup of all the most interesting gaming monitor news from CES. There will have been others I'm sure, but those were the key ones that caught our eye and looked the most interesting. Let us know in the comments which model you're most excited for and we'll leave links to all the relevant news pieces for the screens we've discussed and the technologies that we've discussed in the description. We've got loads more monitor and OLED content coming soon, so do hit subscribe to make sure you stay up to date. Thank you for watching, we'll see you next time.